Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy, and here I am coming at you on the 31st of May 2024. Yes, it's almost June. The time has flown by and here I am in this part of the world and I will have the added bonus of seeing no flipping rainbows absolutely bloody everywhere I go. Right, which is great. None of that really caught on out here. I mean, right, you might see a little bit of it here, a little bit of it there, but it's not like you will have to, um, was it, bow down to the god of the migraine headache um, inducing flag. Right, so enough of that, right. And um, before we get into the main thing, I also uh, heard that Donald Trump has been um, charged for a bunch of felonies. Lots and lots of Trump's up charges, no doubt, if you'll pardon the pun there. But hey, even if they did bang him up and stick him in their clink, he'd probably end up being president <laughs> anyway. And, uh, you know, let's see where that turns out. But, you know, I mean, that's the trouble. Um, you know, over there now, they're wanting to make the opposition illegal. And this used to only happen in uh, third world countries and, you know, Banana Republic places, you know, places that were really, really unstable and unhinged. And America's going that way. But no, today this is not the, the topic. All right, maybe I'll look into that over the next week or so, find out more about it. But today what I want to talk about is Starmageddon. Yes, that's right, Starmageddon. For all you poor, poor buggers who are stuck in the UK, right? Who haven't managed to escape. And to be honest, you know, my heart is still with those who wish to stay and fight. And, and um, you know, I hope that the people who do wish to stay and fight can actually, you know, rise to the challenge of it. Because to be honest, the UK is going to absolutely need it, right? Because yes, the Labour Party, who are an embarrassment to the UK, the fact that millions of people are going to go vote for them and the fact that they're going to win because most people won't vote and there's no one else to vote for because the first past the post system in the UK makes it difficult for anyone else to get in power, apart from Labour or Conservative, which means that Reform don't have a chance of getting in and then even if there were other parties, they wouldn't have a chance of you know, getting in. While at the same time, you know, the, the Conservatives are divided and you know, how could I say, going to become all sort of balkanised within their own ranks. Labour, well, I mean, they're even worse. They're going to be uh, teetering on the edge of a civil war within their own party. They're going to end up running the country, and I don't know how they're going to do it, because they've got so deeply into intersectionalism, right, that, and, and, you know, marginalised groups that, you know, they're not all going to agree on everything. And uh, what do they do? I mean, a good example with Labour is the fact that all the crazy pro-Hamas people are there, you know, and there's loads of them, like proper militant pro-Palestine people who have not confirmed that they are anti-Hamas, right? Well, at the same time, the leader, Keir Starmer, is married to a Jewish woman. So how are they going to square that circle? This is the thing. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's a lot of feminists in there as well. And there's a lot of, uh, how could I say, pro-trans people. Now, we know how that works. That's one intersection that doesn't always join up very well. Um, that, that can cause problems and conflicts. Now, if I was going to say why you shouldn't vote for Labour, what I would do is I would, I would come up and I would get a sort of an edited collage of their conferences. And um, thanks to a uh, podcast of Lotus Eaters, they actually did that. But what I've done is I've got uh, three or four of their videos over two different conferences, one from 2022, one from 2023, and I've given it more even further editing. Uh, to make it look even more ridiculous. Now, my disclaimer is that everything you see here is out of context, right? These are just um, words and sound bites, but I thought it's very important for you to know that they use the buzzwords that they do use, and uh, as time goes on, they're using, you know, the usual phrases that they use, and I think the fact that they're using these phrases is all you need to know, because if you want to know which it, that the world is going in a particularly bad direction, it's quite obvious which direction it's going in via the phrases that people use, irrespective of the context, right? So, if you want to spend the next four minutes, right, from where I am now, if you don't want to watch this, you can go four minutes forward and come back to me. But if you want to laugh and if you want to see four minutes of why you should not vote Labour, check this out. Comrades? Comrades. Comrades. So to quote Che Guevara, 
comrade of mine. Our comrade. 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 And I tell you, comrades. Comrades. Hi, comrades. Comrades. Solidarity, comrades. Thank you, comrades. Solidarity. Solidarity, comrades. For comradeship. Hello, comrades. 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 Sisters, brothers, friends, and comrades. Comrades, we shouldn't be having this debate. Please, comrades. Comrades. But comrades. Comrade chair. Comrades. 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 My pronouns are she, her. I'm an out lesbian. I am a, a neurodiverse person. Solidarity to all trans people from the trade union movement. LGBT rights. Black and ethnic minorities. Local BAME candidate. Black, Asian and ethnic minority people were overexposed to the pandemic. LGBT, LGBT plus people. LGBTQ plus refugees. Women, black and Asian, disabled and LGBT plus people. Female victims. Misogyny. 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 Misogyny and discrimination, homophobic and transphobic hate crime. Making misogyny a hate crime will truly help. And let's treat misogyny as the hate crime that it surely is. Misogyny as a hate crime. Hate crime. Hate crime. Due to the growing impact of online abuse and misogynist influencers, we urgently need to reclaim our online spaces too. We no longer should accept that boys will be boys. We need to change the story. Structural racism, sexism, misogyny and racism. Islamophobia and Afrophobia. The issues are intersectional. All intersectionalities. Sexism. Racism, homophobia, sexism. Women. Women as a black woman. Woman. Women's representation. First time delegate for Congton TLP. Legal justice, climate justice, economic justice, social justice. Social justice. Social justice. Social justice. Social justice. Social justice. In an increasingly diverse country. Socialism. Socialism. We are socialists after all. I became a socialist because I am a feminist. I've been to many women's conferences, but this is my first time speaking at a conference with men here. Often I'm the only woman of colour in the room when climate change is on the agenda. I'd like to emphasise that abortion is health care. Uh, so please now stand for the U Ukrainian national anthem sung by the Svitoch Ukrainian choir. Ukrainian, 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 Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukrainian, 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 Ukraine, 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 challenge the world faces. The climate emergency is this century's biggest threat to humanity. Climate justice. Fascists. Fascists. Fascism. It means that the legislation will ensure that AI and technology does not discriminate based on age, gender, ethnicity or sexual orientation. Conference, it's a testament to this country that I am here today. And to those who sow division in our country by saying multiculturalism has failed, well, hello. Diversity is our strength. Make sure you play left of centre midfield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see that? It's just utterly embarrassing, isn't it? So this is what I'm thinking. You know, you've got these different types of people, right? And all these different um, forms of intersectionality that are going on here, within it, you know? And um, unfortunately, because it's not as up-to-date as more well, recent, um, it's not up-to-date enough, but there aren't enough people saying it, um, Palestine or Gaza in any of this because um, a lot of what I've just shown you is out of date. But it doesn't matter because it's recent enough for you to know that you know, this raggle-taggle sort of shambles, rabble, gaggle, um, shower of whatever you want to call them. That's the only name I'm going to call them, right? They're going to be at the forefront of power. They're the people who are going to be you know, the seats of the establishment for the next five years in the UK, after just over a month from where I'm recording this from, you know, this is what you're gonna have to endure, whether you like it or not, right? 
and it's really embarrassing. And I'll tell you, the one person who stands out for me in all of those videos I showed you is David Lammy. I love just where he over-dramatises everything for effect, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he's uh, I think uh, maybe he got thrown out of RADA and he got into politics and he thought, oh, well, maybe that will do if, uh, you know, if Hollywood won't have me, maybe, uh, maybe the Labour Party will. That's kind of what I, what I see there, right. So, another thing I have to remind you, of course, is that, um, you know, with the situation being as it is, with there being so many people who are infiltrating the council that really want to make um, everything you vote for in the UK about Gaza. Now, this is something that is going on at the moment. So everything has to be about Gaza, like the way it used to be about Ukraine. And I'm looking and thinking just how terrible this is, because, I mean, you know, when you look at this right from one angle, I see Ukraine and Israel, but who's, um, you know, who's backing up Ukraine and Israel? Well, it's Britain and America, you know, one side of it. And then on the other side of it, you know, you see, like, Palestine, and then you've got the, uh, we call it, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Now, the thing about Iran, a lot of people don't understand is that the, uh, a lot of Iranians are not pro the Islamic Republic of Iran, but the lefties and the pro-Palestine lot are actually um, pro-Palestine. They're also, therefore, indirectly, whether they like it or not, pro the Islamic Republic. The Iranians are not pro-Palestine, they um, who were you know the ones who are not pro-Islamic Republic, they are not the pro any of this. And um, they've already been through this because in the 1970s you, it was a monarchy, it was kind of like England. Um, it, it was also a secular democracy, it was a free country, it had um, the Shah, and the Shah was basically the king. And um, you know because I think the government at the time decided to nationalise the uh, oil, um, which kind of excluded BP and it excluded Britain and America from the oil rich economy. Britain and America decided to play some game of empires with Iran, which then led to the overthrow of the Shah and the inserting of the Ayatollah. Um, I mean, I don't know who you can say that they couldn't see the future, so they didn't know what would happen. But Britain and America basically created an environment where a man who was installed into power in Iran who pioneered suicide bombing and justified why the Quran said that could be possible if he wasn't installed and the Shah was still there. Maybe some other problems would happen in the world, but the concept of suicide bombing would never have been realised. And also, as well as that, you could then therefore say that, uh, that to this day, Salman Rushdie would still have two eyes and that his, he would never have had to go into hiding for writing the book that he wrote, The Satanic Verses. You could also say that, I know 9-11 is one of those controversial things, but if, say for instance, there is any elements of truth in the official version of 9-11, if it's possible that it, that it has got something to do with extreme um, Islamism, then it could be argued that by leaving the Shah in control in, um, what was it, in uh, Iran, that maybe 9-11 would never have happened, those Twin Towers might still be standing, and the issues of Israel and Palestine may never have got out of hand the way they have done, right? But the trouble is, of course, is that a vote for Labour now is a vote for Gaza. And if you want to see what's going on, this is a video recently of Angela Rayner, um, the, the, was it, Mark, Sky, Mark Stein calls her the, the ginger growler. I kind of think of her as the northern monk, right? She's there, right, um, talking to senior, um, Muslim clerics about, you know, wanting to help and begging for the votes, pretty much, of these people by, um, by you know, pandering to the pro-Palestinian people. And here's a video of her doing that. Now, I know that people are angry about what's happening in the Middle East. And I said live on TV, and I say to this day, if me resigning as an MP now would bring a ceasefire, no, I would do it. I would do it. And I'll be honest with you, if Labour get into government, we are limited. I will be honest. I'm not going to promise you because Biden, who's the US, who has way more influence, has only got limited influence in that. And Qatar, Saudi Arabia, all of these people, we are all working to stop what's happening at the moment. We want to see that. So I promise you that's what we want to see. And if Labour get into power, we will recognise Palestine. I will push not only to recognise, but there is nothing to recognise at the moment, sadly. It's decimated. We have to rebuild Palestine. We have to rebuild Gaza. So, 
This is the problem, right? Whether we like it or not, if you're in the UK, you're going to be caught up in all of this. They're probably going to be bringing in some legislation, I've heard now, that's going to make it illegal to do any criticism of anything to do with Islam in the future. No matter how bad it gets, no matter even if it becomes an existential threat, or the threat of Sharia law or whatever, the threat of overwriting the culture of the UK, maybe the UK goes in the direction that Iran went into, you know, and it has happened there, so it could happen to the UK, but the Labour Party might make it illegal for you to discuss the possibility of this, to discuss your genuine concerns, because all of a sudden it will become Islamophobia. And you might not be necessarily, you know, one of these racist bigots that they like to say everyone is these days. You might actually be genuinely concerned that your way of life will be taken away from you forever and that you will not have the freedom, especially like if you're a woman, right? And to round in a, you know, in black all the time with your eyes peering out. To, you know, whether you like it or not, because somehow they infiltrate government eventually and somehow they become, and then Britain becomes something like that at some point in the future. If that is likely to happen, there's a possibility that new legislation that may be coming from a Labour Party when they come into power could make it illegal for you to voice your concerns. Now, that's terrifying, is it not? Also, uh, what I would like to, because I mean, you know, I'm just going to have to knock these fuckers and, you know, especially bloody Keir Starmer. I don't know what he stands for. To me, he's just like a photo op person. He's just um, one of these people who likes to get his PR team to take photos of him, take snapshots and videos of him to make him look like he's in touch with the people where, you know, he clearly obviously isn't. And I know I played this to you only last week, but um, this is him justifying to Nick Ferrari why he's working class on LBC. So if you didn't see the last one, check this out. You describe yourself as working class. Sakir, define working class. No, working class is um, families that um, you know, work for their living, earn their money through um, going out to work every day, not through do, other not means. middle classes do that? Well, working class um, families have the ordinary hope to get on in life. I mean, this has been Don't the story... Don't middle classes have that Yeah, of course well? they do. Of course they do. So what's but the I was, distinction? I was, I was addressing um, a particular thing, I think, with working class families, which is this sense that... But, so I talked about the nagging voice that mm -hmm. um, many families have, that this isn't for you, this isn't for me. And I think that holds people back. But I do, because people will say to me, well, look here, you know, um, you've come a long way. Yeah, <laughs> You're, yeah but you, you went how to you state school. Yeah, but that, that is the ordinary hope of the working class, which is to have a decent education, to get a decent secure job, to get a car, to get a, you know, have a nice but, holiday, to have but it, a isn't house. that the middle class too, Sir Kit? Everything it, you just listed? No? Tell it me is. On. Yeah, it is. And it and that's why many people go on their life journey from what you might call uh, working class to middle class. I don't find that at all surprising. Okay. Um, I find that very ordinary. And finally, and although I've mentioned this before, Emily Maitlis interviewed um, Keir Starmer and asked him the question of where did he prefer, Westminster or Davos? And even she sounded sort of like she was taken aback and said, why? When he said Davos, like, you know, and she's supposed to be one of the mainstream gatekeepers. So over to that video now. Um, let us just ask you quickly, you have to choose now between Davos or Westminster? Davos. Why? <laughs> because Westminster is too constrained. Um, and, you know, it's closed and we're not having meaning. Once you get out of Westminster, whether it's Davos or anywhere else, you actually engage with people um, that you can see working with in the future. Westminster is just a, a tribal shouting place. So, yeah, I don't see any hope. All I see that happening in the UK is a ragtag bunch of cretins who don't know their arse from their elbow, can't agree on anyone, lost in a labyrinth and tripping over the contradictions of the intersectionality that they have got all lost in, you know. Um, what the hell are they going to do? And as a result, how the hell are they going to run the UK? How the hell are they going to govern? You know, I just think they couldn't, they couldn't organise a piss up in a brewery. They probably couldn't even run their own noses or their own, their own diarrhoea, never mind a fucking country and it's just going to be an absolute bloody nightmare. 
and I think what will happen is that there will be a brain drain. Um, that, that anyone who can come to the UK to get welfare will do. Any economic migrants that can come to the UK to sponge off the system will definitely do. The uh, the most visionary people, the, the entrepreneurs, the you know, I say the most free-thinking people. Anyone who can get out will get out. There'll be a dr brain drain, most definitely, to, definitely to other countries in the UK and the average IQ will just go down and down and down and down. It will become more of a failed state than it already is, and things will become intolerable. And, um, you know, so all I would say is that if you are one of the people who has decided to stay and fight, and I wouldn't judge you for it, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do. It's your reality. You model it as you wish. But if you are one of the people who has decided to stay and fight, Best of luck to you. I think what people have got to realise at this point is that all the people who are pro-England, all the people who are, you know, wanting to stick up for British values, all the people who have become disillusioned with the left are not all flipping far right, right? This is the thing. They're not. A lot has changed in the last few years. And a lot of people who are just being given that, you know, given that slur, gammon, right? Well, it seems to be okay to call, um, you know, native indigenous Brits gammons, doesn't it? Despite the fact that if the shoe was on the other foot, you could end up um, the way the legislation is going in prison for a hate crime, for saying it about a protected group of people. But in every country, you know, the indigenous must come first, I think. I'm in the Philippines. And to me, like, you know, I go around and I think, well, yeah, the, the, they, they come first. They come before me. I'm a guest in their house, you know. It's their country. Who am I? to tell them how to behave, who am I to, you know, to rewrite their culture? I think it would be very rude of me to do so. And um, that's the thing. So, you know, that's all I can say. If you are going to be staying and fighting in the UK, the best of luck. I hope something good comes of it. I don't think it would make me want to come back. I think my, my whole attitude is that the West is over. I don't think that there is any hope for the future of the West and will not be for centuries into the future. I think the East and maybe places like South America and maybe a few islands and places in between, you know, around the world and maybe, maybe certain bits of Africa, don't know, right, are the future. But I don't think that the uh, I don't think that the Western world is uh, is is going to um, come out of this not for a very very long time. Maybe America will be all right. Don't know. We just have to see what happens with this soap opera with Trump and all of that. But um, if, the, if that evil, malevolent, deep state bunch of corrupt psychopaths could actually be replaced by another bunch of people who mm, the most deepest cynical conspiracy theorists will say, oh, well, it's just controlled opposition, but whatever they're going to say. But it will need a complete change, a, a complete turnaround. Maybe Eastern Europe will be all right as well. That's another thing to, to think of too. The Eastern Europeans know what communism is. They've seen it, they've lived under it, and um, they are fully aware of it. But it's such a shame what's happening to the West. And it's such a shame what's um, that you're going to be stuck with that shower of Muppets, the Labour Party. I think they are the most embarrassing group of, or collective of any kind that there are. And maybe you could also include the American Democrats into that as well. But my God, my God. I just, no, no, absolutely not. The whole idea of it just gives me the willies. This really, really does. Good luck, those of you still there. Best of luck, I think you're gonna need it right now. Right then, I suppose I should wrap up and toddle off. So, it's, um, you know, I'm gonna say, almost 1st of June, um, what to say. Uh, and as I said at the, at the top of this show, I'm gonna be spending the next month not looking at rainbows. Great, hey. <laughs> See you later, alligator. See you soon, a baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, check out all our social media links. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.